Hello, I'm Halili Knox with SFGov TV. Along with the League of Women Voters of San Francisco, I'm here to discuss Proposition B, a ballot measure that will be before the voters on Tuesday, November 4th. Proposition B is a charter amendment that would require the city to increase the base amount provided to the SFMTA by a percentage equal to the city's annual population increase, taking into account daytime and nighttime populations as determined by the controller's office. In 2015, the city would increase the base amount based on population increases over the previous 10 years. In future years, the city would increase the base amount based on population increases over the previous year. Proposition B would also require the SFMTA to use 75% of any population-based increases in the base amount to improve Muni's reliability, frequency of service, and to pay for Muni repairs. The other 25% would be used for capital expenditures to improve street safety. Proposition B would also authorize the mayor to discontinue the base amount increases required by this measure if the voters enact a vehicle license fee in the future. If you vote yes, you want to change the charter to increase the amount the city provides to the SFMTA based on increases in the city's population. These funds must be used to improve Muni and to improve street safety. If you vote no, you do not want to make this change. I'm here with Peter Strauss from the board of the San Francisco Transit Riders and a proponent of Proposition B. We are also joined by Marcy Berry, vice chair of the Libertarian Party of San Francisco and an opponent of the measure. Thank you both for being here. We'll start with some opening comments, beginning with you, Mr. Strauss. Thank you. Prop B is a common sense approach to, uh, tying transportation funding to, tra to population growth. Muni is overcrowded and unreliable. Buses and trains break down too often and don't run often enough. Voters know that. San Francisco has grown by 10% since 2003, over 85,000 people, and Muni service is just not kept up. Prop B will adjust the formula that pays for Muni service to reflect this growth in the city's population. But Prop B will not increase taxes, it will adjust how tax money is used. Prop B will pay for improvements for which bond money cannot be used. 75% of Prop B will pay for new Muni vehicles, for their maintenance and for the repair of the existing Muni fleet, and for more frequent buses and trains. <clears throat> but not all of uh, Prop B will go for Muni improvements. 25% of the Prop B funds will be used for measures to improve safety on our streets for all users. It'll pay for measures to achieve Vision Zero, the plan to eliminate traffic fatalities within 10 years. So we hope the voters agree with us and vote for Prop B. Thank, Thank you. you. Your opening remarks, Ms. Berry? Thank you for having us. Uh, we have recommended, the Libertarian Party of San Francisco has recommended a no vote on Proposition B for the following reason. Uh, we speak about population growth. However, population growth in San Francisco is bound to be more than is reasonable. And the reason for that is that policies nowadays remove the market forces that keep the balance even. So that all services will grow, will need to grow. For example, our sewage system hasn't been updated since the gold rush. We need schools, we need first responders, all of these systems that are not tied to population but to revenue. So we have one that's tied to an unreasonable situation and is going to suck up funds from all the other services. There's just so much in the pot and we need to allocate it as well as we can. Thank you. So let's start with some questions. Uh, what benefits will the passage of this measure bring to motorists? To motorists? Uh, I think the primary benefit for motorists, you know, der derives from the portion that will go to improve traffic safety. I mean, this will improve traffic safety for motorists, for bicycles, bicyclists, for pedestrians, for everyone, uh, involving measures such as um, bulbs and more clearly defined crosswalks, better signalization. Uh, and uh, really, that's the primary benefit for motorists. Although, you know, motorists uh, benefit the fewer cars are on the street and the more people are riding Muni, the fewer, less traffic there is. Thank you. Ms. Berry, how do you respond? Yes, um, I would like to say that just because we have funding not necessarily mean that we have either good planning or efficiency. 
And what we're talking about here, in my opinion, would be efficiency. And for example, when we allocate money to say putting bulbs or designing this or designing that, what other agenda are we talking about? Removing cars altogether from the streets, perhaps. So my point is efficiency is what should come first. The ability to get traffic moving in a, a, a way that we can always get to work. There is no impediments for us to do what we need to do. Funding is not the issue. More, I think the issue is more efficiency and good planning. Will this measure increase the accessibility and frequency of muni service in low-income neighborhoods? Oh, I'm actually glad you asked me that question. Oh, good. Um, a number of people in the city, some of my colleagues in various or organizations, have been working with uh, the MTA, the Municipal Transportation Agency staff, in the last year to develop what's called an equity analysis, which is an analysis of uh, how, uh, you know, whether there are inadequacies in how Muni serves minority areas, you know, in San Francisco. What this measure does is it would provide the funding that could be used to address some of the, you know, any needs that are identified. Because to have an equity analysis and not have any money behind it for service to address any deficiencies that come up is sort of meaningless, you know. So I see them as sort of working hand in, hand in glove with the equity analysis that the MTA is going to start performing this year in providing resources to address what needs to be addressed. Great, thank you. Ms. Berry, what are your thoughts? My question would be, do we need an equity analysis, you know, one more layer of bureaucracy? I would say, you know, make sure that Muni is accessed by all neighborhoods. It's as simple as that. Right now we're talking about transit corridors. We're talking about a, a completely different design than simply offering Muni service to all the neighborhoods, regardless of whether they are low income or whether they are whatever. And again, we're not talking about, in my opinion, funding is not the issue. We are just going to add layers of bureaucracy without any sort of efficiency. We have had Muni asking for more money for the past how many years? I don't see any improvement. You know, we, we said that by 2015 we would have 85% on time. Well, we don't. We have like 65% on time. Shouldn't we be working on that? Great, thank you. So it's time for final thoughts. Uh, we'll begin with you, Ms. Barry, for your comments. Yeah, the final thoughts is we need to view Proposition B or any proposition in the context of the entire city. We can't just say we need transportation. Yes, we need transportation. We also need a whole array of other services. So I would suggest that voters think twice before tying population growth and transportation because all the other services are going to be left behind. Schools, for example, are very important. We are, we're addressing that with other propositions. So we have this infighting between all sectors that need growth. And the growth, as I said, is going to be particularly abnormal in San Francisco, given the, the, the policies that are engendered to remove the economic forces that would keep everything in balance. Thank you. Final comments from you, Mr. Strauss? Thank you. <clears throat> when the voters established the Municipal Transportation Agency 15 years ago, the MTA was funded by setting up a formula which appropriates a portion of the city's general fund for transportation. This was done to depoliticize transportation funding, to eliminate what Marcy called some of the infighting, and to guarantee transportation a set budget each year. The systems actually work pretty well, but not quite well enough. For instance, it was not able to protect us from severe muni service cuts in 2008 and 2009. Prop B tweaks these formulas to reflect population growth in the city of the past 10 years and to keep up with growth as we go forward. As I said, it also supports Vision Zero, the goal to eliminate traffic fatalities in the city in 10 years. Prop B will invest in improvements in muni reliability, frequency, and capacity, while also investing in making our streets safer for all users. And as I said, I hope uh, the viewers uh, join our neighbors and help and support Prop B in November. Thank you both for your time and your comments. 
We hope that this discussion has been informative. For more information on this and other ballot measures in this year's election, please visit the San Francisco Elections website at sfelection.org. Remember, early voting is available at City Hall Monday through Friday from 8 to 5. You can also vote at City Hall on the two weekends before Election Day. And if you don't vote early, be sure to vote on Tuesday, November 4th.